Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Navid and today I want to show you how to use comparator operations in Tia Portal. In Tia Portal we have some instructions to perform a comparison between two values with the same data type like equal greater than and less than. If you click on instructions and then comparator operations, you can find these instructions. Let's start with equal. You can use the equal instruction to determine if a value is equal to another value. If the condition of the comparison is fulfilled, the instruction returns the result of logic operation one. And if the condition is not fulfilled, the instruction returns zero. As I said, the operands uh, to be compared must be of the same data type. Let's see an example of how we can use this instruction. We have a counter here. I need an output to be turned on when the counter value is equal to five. How can we do that? I'm going to insert an equal operator, drag and drop it. Here we must determine the type of data that are going to be compared. The counter value is an integer, so I choose here integer. We need to specify the first comparison uh, value above the instruction. So I use the address of the CV here. And the second comparison value below the instruction is five. I assign an output. So the comparator will compare the CV value with five. If the two values are equal, the output will be on. Let's simulate our program. All right, the counter value is zero. I'm going to increase it. As you see, when the counter value is five, the output of the comparator goes high. Otherwise it is zero. The next comparator is not equal. It can be used to determine if a value is not equal to another one. If the two values are not equal, the instruction returns the result of logic operation one. Otherwise, it will be zero. In our example, I insert this instruction. This time, if the counter value is not equal to five, the output will be on. And when it is five, the output will be turned off. As long as the CV is not equal to 5, the output is on. Now it is 5 and the output is off. When I press the input of the counter again and increment the CV, the two values will be again different and so the output will be on again. Then we have greater than or equal. 
Let's insert it into our programming environment. This time, if the counter value is equal to 5 or greater than 5, then the output will be on. The counter value is equal to 3, which is less than 5, so the output is still off. Now it is 5 and the output is on. Even with CV6 and uh, greater, the output remains on. Be careful, unlike the comparators equal and not equal, if we exchange the inputs here, the program logic will change. I use this instruction with exchanged uh, inputs. Let's see what's the difference. Here the counter value is greater than 5, so the output is on. But in the second one, 5 is not greater than the CV, so the output is off. To prevent any mistakes place in your mind, the first input on the left side of the comparator sign, and the second one on the right side. The next one is less than or equal. If the counter value is less than 5 or equal to 5, then the output will be on. With the CV 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 output remains on, but with the CV greater than 5 it will be off. Similarly are greater than and less than operators. If the counter value is for example 3, uh, the output of less than operator will be on. With 5, both are uh, off and with the CV6, the operator greater than will be activated. As I said, for these comparators, we can select the type of data that we want to compare. For example, character. It's important to know that the individual characters are compared by means of their code. For example, lowercase a is greater than capital letter A because 61 is greater than uh, 41. If there is more than one character, the comparison is performed from left uh, to right. Okay, let's talk about in-range instruction. You can use these instructions to know whether the value at the input is within a specific value range or not. You specify the limits of the value range with the min and max inputs. If the value is within the range, the output of this instruction will be on. I'm going to use this instruction. The min value, let's determine 2 and max value 5. 
If the counter value is in the range of 2 and 5, for example 2, 3, 4 uh, or uh, 5, the output will be on. The CV is again out of the range, so the output is off. The instruction out of range works inversely. It is used to know whether the input value is outside of a specific value range, not inside. With any value of the CV out of between 2 and 5, the output is on. As you see, if I click here, I can replace this instruction with a uh, in range instruction. Okay, the last two instructions are check validity and invalidity. You can use check the validity instruction to check if the value of an operand is a valid floating point number. When the value of the operand is a floating point number, the output will be on. A floating point number is a positive or negative number with a decimal point. For example, 5.5 .5 and minus 10.3 are floating point numbers, while uh, 9 1 and 10 are not. Check invalidity instruction is used to check if the value of an operand is an invalid floating point number. I'm going to insert both of the instruction into our program. Instead, also a move operation to move a value to the input of our instructions. The instructions check a float number so they have a data type of real and I need to use a double word. Our value is 0, 0.0 and it's a float number, so the output of check validity is on and the output of check invalidity is off. I modify it to 10. Check validity is off because 10 is an integer value. Let's try 10.1. As you know, 10.1 is a float number. What about a character? Let's try it. As you see, it's not a float number. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any question, please write it below in the comments. See you next video.